Hello, I'm Jennifer Witt, Director of ProjectManager.com. Well, welcome to our whiteboard session today on why not having enough resources sucks and what to do about it. This is one of the most common things we hear all the time. If you're out on some of the discussion boards of ours, you'll see people talking about maybe they're in the middle of a project and there's a downsizing initiative that takes away their people. Maybe they're in the middle of an implementation and projects get reprioritized taking away some of their key resources, their people, maybe some of their budgets, and impacts everything. So that really sucks, but we have a few things here we want to identify that may help during those situations that we know will occur. So we want to identify that resources are not just people. Resources can be people. They could be money, it could be equipment, it could be tools, software, energy. Um, some of the causes, again, can be downsizing or right-sizing of the organization, attrition, maybe uh, people quit or maybe they retire. Uh, there's reprioritizing of different projects and some of it just boils down to poor planning on the project manager's part. So why, um, why this um, sucks so much is that it impacts the project. So it can extend timelines, it can increase costs, so if you don't have uh, certain things, certain resources, and you have to go obtain them during the project or after the fact, sometimes it costs more. You can't really negotiate things in bulk, so it costs more. It can jeopardize the quality, so if you don't have enough resources, if it maybe is people, and you have, if you need a certain uh, requirement uh, or skill set of a person and you can't really find that. Maybe there aren't many people trained on a certain thing so you have to get other uh, people to uh, do certain tasks. So if they don't know how to do it correctly or they're just learning it could impact the quality. Um, it most of the time changes the scope because um, because it does impact other areas of the triple constraint so you, it can uh, determine how much scope you're able to complete. Number five, it impacts others. A lot of times when you are short of resources and it does impact your timeline budget or scope or quality, that's going to impact others, whether it's other people, other organizations. It could impact your client or your stakeholders. And it causes stress. So when all of these things change and you're lacking resources, it imparts stress on your project. And as we know, stress comes conflict and certain discord, so things start breaking down, and then that becomes potential for more failure on your project. So what do we do in those instances? Again, reminding a lot of times these are things that we don't have control over, but they're still going to happen. Uh, the poor planning we are in control of, but a lot of times things occur that we don't have any control over. So uh, the best thing we can do is as soon as we know we identify the risk and issues. Now, as soon as we know is you can know, a project manager can know they're short of resources before the project ever begins. So it's important to document that uh, and identify it in the charter, in the project plan. But if you are in the middle of the uh, project and those things change, identify the risk and issues quickly. Uh, determine what impact it's going to have. Again, remembering the triple constraint that we're responsible for because changing in one of the components are more likely going to change the others. So determining the impact and going to the change control board. So when you, when you notify the change control board, it's good to let them know that you've already identified how it's going to impact and some of your recommendations, but ultimately leaving it to the change control board to uh, determine what they're going to do with that information. A lot of times, again, these causes come from other things that we as a project manager don't have control over, but they do know and they're, uh, they are also members of other teams or projects or organization where decisions are being made. They know about downsizing. They know about reprioritizing. So they can help make the decision and then uh, document what decisions made. A lot of times it, the decision could be that they're going, that they're deciding to, they're agreeing upon and they're proving that the project run with, uh, with the lack of resources. So it's good that you document that and the changes so that you as the project manager aren't 
left holding the bag at the end of the project with the fail project. And then update the plan. So once the change control board uh, determines what they're going to do about that information, then you update the plan. You may rescope, you may uh, hire new people, whatever you need to do based on those decisions. And then you notify others. Again, remembering that these not only impact your team, but it, it could impact other organizations or vendor partners. So notify them of this information. And then nurture your team because again, if you're running on the on the principle that you are lacking resources, uh, again, that causes stress. Somebody's probably working overtime, double time, or maybe without training or skills that they need. And so it's up to the project manager to continue to uh, provide help, provide any other resources or nurturance for the team members along the way. So. It is a fact, this does suck, but hopefully these are some of the things that you can do when those situations occur. If you need a tool that can help you track your resources, then sign up for our software now at projectmanager.com.